back to Bake on Low. Sorry I've been gone for so long. I changed everything. <laughs> I moved back home to Canada. So it's really good to be home and perfect time to do the second episode of Around the World in 80 Bakes. So this one, what other country would I do besides Australia? So Australia, my second home. I lived there for like a year and a half, almost two years, and just got back home last month. It's hard to pick just one classic Australian dessert. There's so many. I could have done pavlova, caramel slice. I thought about doing Tim Tams, but I might try and make those in another video. But I decided on one of my favorites, which is the vanilla slice. So I've never made puff pastry before. I've never made custard before. That isn't from a bag. <laughs> so yeah, this will be a fun experiment. We'll see how it turns out. I don't uh, know if it's gonna be perfect, but we'll try. So yeah, I mean that's kind of the thing with this channel. It's not meant to be for recipes, like I'm not a pro baker or a chef or whatever, but it's more fun like I'm just trying them out and if they turn out good that's awesome. If they don't you guys can laugh at me. Yeah, so it's more just an experiment and to get me to try um, baking things from all different cultures and places in the world. Yeah, I think it would be really fun. Australia, of course, it's not that uh, different, but they do have different foods and they have different like things that are popular versus here versus America versus whatever. So I think it's fun to, to experiment and see and try them. and. If you ever wondered what do Australians eat when they go to a bakery, here's something you can try and make at home if it works out. But yeah, that's that's kind of it. I'm gonna be trying to do a lot more videos a lot more often and actually start getting into YouTube. My first video was kind of like a test experiment, so it wasn't very good, but thanks for watching if you watched it. I hope you guys enjoy. But yeah, this is just a fun... Uh, fun project. So enjoy. Keep on watching. <laughs> okay guys, so we're gonna start off by making the pastry. This is a shortcut puff pastry recipe from Bigger Bolder Baking, which I'll link below. So I'm starting off with approximately three quarter cup of cold water and I'm adding one tablespoon of lemon juice and giving that a stir. Then we're moving on to the dry ingredients. I'm taking two and a third cups or 325 grams of AP flour. Then to that I'm adding a pinch of salt and giving it a stir. Now to get a decent pastry, you want everything to be cold. So I'm popping both the flour mix and the lemon water mix in the fridge to chill for about 15 minutes. Okay, and we're back now. We're gonna take our frozen butter and a cheese grater. It sounds odd, but gives us those nice little pieces of butter that will mix in beautifully to give us a flaky pastry. So I'm just grating this in my bowl on a kitchen scale until I get to 200 grams of butter. If you don't have a scale, you can measure out 14 tablespoons or about three quarter cup plus two tablespoons of butter. Yeah, I just find the easiest way to just grate it right in there. Okay, so we're gonna stir this in with a butter knife to incorporate. Next, go grab your chilled water mix and don't pour it all in at the start because depending on your dough, you may not need all of it. So just take it easy with that. Then just get your hands in there, give her a mix. I'm just trying to bring it together gently, adding more liquid as we need. Kind of just folding and pressing it together with your hands. Looking for just enough to bring it to this cauliflower looking ball form. And voila! And we're gonna wrap it in saran wrap, toss it in the fridge for at least an hour, up to three days. I don't know how you can wait that long, but be my guest. Okay, so while that is chilling, we're gonna make the custard. 
because that's got to chill out too for a while. So I got this recipe from Donna Hayes' website, but I found it to be a bit runny for vanilla slice, so I'll tell you where I change things if you're gonna try and make this. So start off with one and a half cups or 375 milliliters of milk, and throw her in a medium-sized pot, then add another one and a half cups of pouring cream to the milk and then 60 grams or one quarter cup of unsalted butter goes in doesn't really matter what temperature it is because we're going to melt it anyway so next you're going to grab your vanilla extract so add two teaspoons of that then you're going to take your white sugar and add 150 grams or three quarter cups and put that in all on medium heat while we work on the eggs so you're going to need six egg yolks for the custard I find the best way to separate them is cracking them on the table and then just letting the white fall through your hands so that you're not risking the broken shell uh, breaking your yolks. And save your egg whites. You can freeze them and use them later to make a meringue or something. Okay, then the recipe said to mix half a cup or 50 grams of cornstarch or corn flour with half a cup or 125 milliliters of water. So I'd probably go up to 80 grams of cornstarch for this just to thicken it more so that it wouldn't be as runny as mine was. So just whisk that together till it's a thick paste. We're gonna give our mix a stir to kind of melt in that butter a bit. And here I'm lining an eight inch square baking pan with parchment on all sides for easy removal. And I give it a little baking spray to stick. Our mix has just started to boil, so I kill the heat and take it off while I add my egg yolks to my cornstarch paste. Holy crap, that's a lot of eggs. Yep, six yolks. Six? Holy yeah. crap! And here I kind of screwed up by trying to just pour my hot mixture in. So what I recommend, which is probably smarter, is using a ladle to pour in a bit of that hot mix, whisking until you've brought the eggs to temperature. If you just add all the eggs at once to the pot without tempering them, you get a big mess of scrambled eggs, so you definitely don't want to skip this step. And I'm going to put the pot back on medium heat, whisking constantly until it thickens up. So this took me maybe one to two minutes. You'll be able to feel it when you're stirring, so then just cut off the heat and move the pot again. Then I decided to add a pinch of sea salt and some more vanilla to this for a bit more flavor. Okay, so this is kind of an extra step, but I do recommend putting the custard through a fine sieve to catch any possible cooked egg that might have snuck in there, which as you can see, I had a lot, so you don't want that gross stuff in there. Finally, we're gonna cover the bowl in saran wrap, pressing it down straight onto the custard so it doesn't form a skin, and we're gonna let that hang out on the counter till it's not hot anymore. Okay, so now our dough's been in the fridge for a couple hours, so we'll get that guy out of there and onto a lightly floured counter and cut in half one piece for the top and one for the bottom. Now you're gonna attempt to roll it into a square that will fit your pan. Add extra flour as needed if it's sticking and just double check that it's big enough. So then you're gonna preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius. And I was trying to figure out how to keep my pastry from puffing up in the oven because you want it to be flat, right? So I found a recipe that said to line a baking sheet and place the pastry on there, line it again, and place another sheet on top to press down gently uh, on the pastry as it bakes. So I tried this out and honestly it didn't work for me. It was taking forever to bake. So I ended up just taking the second sheet off and baking normally. It made my pastry a bit overbaked, so it ended up too crunchy. But what I do next time is just bake normally and then after you take it out of the oven, place a pan on top after and then press it so it cools flat. Okay, so once it was finally done, I trimmed it to the size of my pan and placed my first layer inside and then filled it with the custard on top and smoothed it out. And I did the same step with my uh, crunchy ass top layer of pastry and stick her in the fridge for at least three to four hours. I did mine overnight. 
Okay, so now we're gonna work on that iconic white icing top. So for this, I didn't really use a recipe. I just went by how the consistency looked, but start with icing sugar. I think mine was about 100 grams. Then add a splash of milk and a splash of vanilla and give it a whisk. Then I poured it over my slice to find out that I needed a lot more. <laughs> so spread that as evenly as you can with a palette knife. Okay, so to get those brown stripes on top, we're gonna add some cocoa powder to the rest of our icing. Just enough until you get that dark color you're looking for and whisk that up. Then put it in a piping bag or a little Ziploc, cut off the end and go down the whole slice with stripes. Then you can take a toothpick and drag down the opposite way back and forth to create that chevron kind of pattern, wiping off the toothpick in between. And because my pastry didn't bake very flat, that's why my icing looks um, pretty horrible. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> okay, so the vanilla slice is done. It ended up um, an abstract version. I'm hoping it's gonna taste good. So we're gonna do a taste test with my family. Okay, so I think they turned out pretty good. They're not the prettiest vanilla slices ever, but for my first time making them, not too bad. I think the flavor is there, but obviously um, doing my own pastry for the first time could use a lot of work. Yeah, I think next time I make them custard, I gotta do a bit thicker so it sets a bit better. And yeah, just improve my pastry skills. But here we go, guys. I am pretty proud of them. The Australian uh, snot block. There you have it. <laughs> I hope you guys try this out. Let me know how it goes. This is probably one of my favorite Aussie desserts. And yeah, now I'm gonna give them to my family to try out. An Aussie classic. It's Mary Day. It took so long to get it. sick for So uh, here I have my family willing to try my vanilla slice. <laughs> so go ahead guys, this is CJ, my sister, and my dad. And tell me what you think. It's good. It's good. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and my mom says, Thumbs up. You guys have any comments? It's good, the pastry is good. It reminds me of those flaky, what do they call them, Napoleons here? Yeah. It's like it's that. It's very right? similar. What's a Napoleon? You know what a meal <laughs> foy is? Yeah. Meal foy is the French version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Napoleon, I think, is the Canadian version. And this is kind of the Aussie version. Probably Cheek. good. Scooby. <laughs> Taste test. Pretty close. Pretty good. The custard is really good. The pastry is pretty good. It's flaky, but a little bit tough. You could honestly easily do this with store-bought puff pastry. I think that would probably work pretty well. I just had to try and make it from scratch because I've got to try everything. You can also buy like pre-made custard powder they just mix in like milk or whatever. That could work too, and then you could make this like very quickly and easily. But we go through a lot less work than I did, but I'm sure it would still taste really good. I think though, if you make anything, the custard is like the star, so try it out. <laughs>